So what's up, Miles? How are you? Hey, Jamie. Thanks for having me on, bro. Thanks for a for coming on. Yeah, we were just saying there, like, all plans have been have been thrown off uh, with uh, with the coronavirus. Uh, no, do, do you think do you think you'll get a fight in at the end of the year? Uh, I'd like to get a fight at the end of the year. There was a the plan originally because uh, myself and my coach were talking about it. Uh, I was uh, I, I was I'm under new management as well, so I was uh, I was looking forward to kind of signing that contract and and starting out with fights. You know what I mean? That was exciting news for me. So. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to fight at the end of the year. I think it's probably going to be next year, mid next year, I think, because, you know, by the time you kind of, it's already to keep in shape and all that, you know, but you need to get quality spars in and no one's getting them at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, would you, if the possibility came to maybe take a fight outside of Ireland, or maybe do a camp outside of Ireland, would you think about that maybe? Uh I would, but I only really like. I'll be honest with you. I just uh, there's a real family and team thing with me in regards to um, my team here in Kilkenny, up in Dublin, and over in San Jose. So I kind of need to. I like to be part of either one of them. To be honest with you, if I was going to do any sort of camps. Yeah. But uh, so, how did you actually? How did you get started in uh, in martial arts? Um, I started off when I was I was working in a but in a butcher's when I was a young lad, and a fella came in. And he was hanging up posters for a local kickboxing show. And at the time, they were like big shows, like Tree Arena kind of job, like, you know what I mean, a big stadium <laughs> in my hometown. They were a big deal anyway. And uh, I just started doing kickboxing from there on in. And uh, there was a lot of world champions in that gym at the time. Uh, absolutely run down, crappy gym. But <laughs> they would have great character, a lot of champions. So I, uh, I, I kind of went from there. And then we moved facility. Fella came in with dodgy set of ears, uh, Polish wrestling champion. So started messing around with him and went abroad to train in America in SBG Berkeley for a while and uh, came back, had my first pro fight and it just kind of went on from there, man. I suppose, yeah. It's mad, isn't it? Like, can you see the, you see the, all the big gyms, but oftentimes, like, it's the humble beginnings. Like, it's the small, like you said, not best facilities that sometimes the best champions come out of. Ah, they have the best of characters, yeah. Like, I love gyms like that, you know what I mean? I love gyms that are a little bit run down and a little bit... It's like uh, the lovable, ugly dog, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what's it... Um, would it have been, like, Wacko kickboxing or was it one of the other kind of federations? Uh, so w- w- Wacko, Wacko, yeah. WKA and Wacko, yeah, at the time. Yeah. They were the two big ones, like, yeah. That would have been all full contact fights, would they? Yeah, full contact back in the day, yeah. Yeah, so um, I'd, 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 would you have done other sports apart from that even like before before you started fighting? Oh, I did hurling and stuff like that. Um, hurling is a is like a it's like a big sport here in Kilkenny where I'm from. So uh, it's just an Irish sport. So I did that for a while, but I was uh, I was a little had a little bit of an aggro problem when I was a teen. So uh, I decided to uh, kind of hum, humble myself a bit by doing martial arts, and it certainly does the trick anyway. <laughs> It? Yeah, it's um, but do you think you kind of came to the like into fighting quite late because, like, you know, you see kids getting into martial arts like kickboxing, I know even the taekwondo, and they're getting in at five, six, seven years of age. Do you think you kind of do you think you were a bit late? Uh, I think I think that, that depends on the person, really. You know what I mean? I feel like it, it came at the right time for me, you know what I mean? And I feel like sometimes I see, uh, from my experience of being a coach, it's actually quite hard to keep uh, kids going like you know what I mean up from a very young age and to keep it going for the rest of their lives you know I feel like I started at the right age and uh, I don't want to come across biased because I started at that age but I feel like when you're 15 to 16 you're kind of looking for a path in life around then you know what I mean you're looking for purpose and and what you're living for you know what I mean and uh, and you know you're going through kind of like hormones and shit like that so uh, to give a little bit of purpose and to humble the soul with martial arts, I feel is is good for teenagers, you know. Yeah, no, myself. Like I started, I started training taekwondo at seven, and mm. um, yeah, like that. It wasn't I didn't take it serious. I like, still trained like two, even three times a week. But I was doing other sports, and that's like sometimes they would take over, and they give, you know you might have to miss a day of taekwondo to go and play a match or something. But like, it was only around like 14, 15. And started looking, go right. I'm going to take this serious because I want to. Can I go and achieve something in that sport? So I think it is really only around that age where you can really fully commit to. It's kind of maybe only starts to get serious. Up to then, things tend to be maybe maybe just fun until they get. Yeah, to 
Well, there's a lot to be there's a lot to be said about having a about having a playful mindset towards martial arts, and sometimes I feel like uh, me for one, I feel like I trained for years without a playful mindset. I was very serious, almost too serious towards martial arts. You have to play, you know what I mean? Like that's if you watch any of the Thais, how they train and how they spar, you know they 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 don't wear any. Uh, they literally just have shorts on, and they're just if you ever watch Sanchai sparring or playing, like you know what I mean? Like it's just. They're literally almost in a fight, like, but they're so good at controlling how they connect with their shots and the intensity of how they connect with the shots that it's just such a, it's, it's just, sparring is like just a load of crack for them, you know what I mean? Like, it's not a serious thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I suppose then, like, they fight, they fight nearly every weekend as well, so it's like you have to playful in the gym during the weekend and then fight at the weekend just kind of seems to be their, their philosophy. Yeah, that's it. Like, exactly, yeah, that's it. But even I think is there something with their fights? They nearly like the first round. They don't fight for the first round and the last round. Pretty much, they kind of take those rounds off, and it's the the, the middle rounds where they kind of the fight is won. Yeah, it seems to be that case in regards to Thai boxing. Like, yeah, it's, uh, it's just the way. They, it's just the nature of the sport, really. Yeah, like even the crowd they don't expect like the first round of much action to happen because they just right they'll take that off. They give it socks. Yeah. Give it socks for the middle rounds. Take the last round off and we'll go again next week. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, so, like, so the, it's kind of strange. I suppose it's strange. No, maybe it wasn't strange at the time that you you didn't you didn't have an amateur career, did you? No, I had an amateur kickboxing career, and then uh, I was pro in kickboxing from about sixteen to nineteen, and then I just decided to go full time into MMA. Then you know. Yeah. So did you give it much? Did you give the grappling much time? To get it to adjust, or did you just say uh, that's 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 where different. a lot of my that's yeah that's where a lot of my losses in my in my earlier part of my career came from. I just didn't give a bollocks, you know. I just jumped in and fought, and you know, didn't really care about records or any of that shit at all. So I was just a striker, and I just wanted to knock someone out before they got me to the floor. Really, <laughs> that was it. would you not have seen it? Was were you maybe? maybe not thinking of it as a career at that stage, like you said, like we weren't worrying about a record. It was kind of just jumping in and being competitive. Being it, was, it was just jumping in and just having the crack and being competitive. That's exactly what it was. You know, I just, I just really love the, the, the feel of competition. I still do. I love the challenge of competition as well. Still, it's the same feeling, like competition, the, the how you deal with competition is what counts. You know, uh, I still love it. Uh, obviously, there's different... Uh, there's a little bit more mental energy that needs to be put into something like a fight in a big stadium as opposed to fighting in like a tournament-based competition or in like a small hall or something like that. But other, but the jitters are the same and the feelings are the same. Yeah. So like, were you were you working in the butchers long? Were you, were you trying to balance that that job with with training for long, or did you pack into the, the, that nah, job? I uh, packed that in. Like I, lo- I, I never, I never cared about the money. Like you know what I mean. I've always been like that. I live, I, I live broke for years, and I just like look. I'm happy doing martial arts. Uh, I don't care if I make money at it or not. I just like doing what makes me happy. You know what I mean. And and eventually, I ended up making me money, and because I made a bit of a name for myself as a martial artist, really, and. Uh, started helping others through my coaching and personal training, and I was lucky enough to make a living out of it. So, yeah, that's that's, that's I think that's a common theme as well, isn't it? Between between guys, they, they it's not it's, you have to give you nearly give those years of being broke to, and then eventually the money you have to, might, might come. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You can th- I can thank the government for that on the dole for a <laughs> <laughs> the government's payroll. Yeah, yeah, they looked after me. <laughs> Uh, sure. That seems to be the thing at the moment with this coronavirus, anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hundred percent. Sort of like fucking hell. Everyone's in the same boat, aren't they? Yeah. So, but like you fought a lot of top promotions, then. Like most of the top promotions in Europe, you you've had a crack off of. Yeah, Cage Warriors, Bam, Bellator, name a few. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you have a a, a preference like on which ones you preferred? I really enjoyed my time on Bam, actually. I love my fights on Obama, I have to say. I really enjoyed it. I think they treated me very, very well. Uh, never had... Uh, like, like, they always wanted to promote me as well. Uh, Jude was always very good with promoting me, Jude Samuel, you know what I mean? Uh, he was very, very good. He was always kind of fond of me as well, and I was fond of him, and we had a good relationship. And uh, I, I actually really enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed my time in Bama the most, yeah. Yeah, I remember they, they used to put on some good cards, even in the three arena and stuff. I was... Uh, 
or was that one myself? Yeah, they did. A couple of my buddies were at a they were at a couple of cards up there as well. So and they were all they always look, seemed to be good nights. Very good nights, yeah, yeah. In fairness, like they had some fantastic cards, like great fights. Yeah. Like the, I think the one I was at was the one where it was key, key for a fight. I think it was maybe the co main and he got the big cut and there was a great atmosphere there, like for you know, like for a card like that. That was that was a bit wild. Don't mention his name on this podcast. <laughs> no worries, we get into it. We can, we can maybe we I don't want to mess it up. Always a love. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, so, wait, so who did you start your MMA training with? Then were you straight away with? Uh, it's Andy Ryan. You're kind of with now. Is it Team Rhino? Yeah, I started off just doing my own thing. To be honest, Jeff, making it up as I went with my friends, and uh, then uh, John Cavanaugh kind of uh, met into John Cavanaugh. We got talking. Uh, ended up moving in with him, uh, trained there for a good while. And then I left SVG and then I went over to train uh, with Andy Ryan. He was the natural choice for me straight after because they're, they're the, it's like they're the two biggest teams in Ireland. You know what I mean? It's Team Rhino and, and SVG. So it's just one or the other, really. Yeah. So then, and then as you said, you already, you, you went, you went to uh, AKA, was that? Was that kind of in between, going between your time with John and Andy, or had you trained with Team Rhino already before you went to AKA? Oh, yeah, I was training with, uh, it, was, it was after the Norman Park fight, because I got, uh, I got, uh, I got wrestle fucked for about three rounds. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I, 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 I was striking fine, I was out striking Norman easily enough, you know what I mean, but his, his wrestling's very good, like, he's good at what he does, you know what I mean, he's good at, at a uh, grinding out fights and grinding out wins that's just what he's good at you know what I mean so uh, and, and it was the second time I lost to Norman as well so it was a little bit kind of like alright right I've had enough of this shit now I'm going over and I'm going to go through an absolute bucket load of suffering over in a good wrestling camp in America like you know so uh, and I'm going to embrace it and I'm going to learn and I did like so uh, that's kind of where that came from you know the idea to train and it wasn't AK in particular uh, I first actually asked to try it. I asked my teammate first about TriStar, and uh, I was like, oh, do you know, it's fucking freezing over there. I'm sick of the cold weather in Ireland, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> I said, uh, I, I said, I go, I, then I said, oh, what about Jackson Winks? I sent a few emails there, and uh, I was like, oh, do you know, there's a lot of domestics going on in that gym at the moment, from what I've heard, like, you know what I mean? And then, yeah. and then I messaged fucking uh, that Henry fella, whatever his name is, Henry Huff from Tree Hard Knocks. And he was like, he was like, oh yeah, no problem. Uh, that's it's two hundred and fifty dollars a week to train here. And I went, What? You're fucking joking me, aren't you? And I'm coming from fucking Ireland, you fucking tight arse bastard, you I'm a fucking pro fighter, you know what I mean? I'm not yeah. over there like as a, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm over I'm over there to, to learn and I don't mind paying me fees, of course I don't, like, you know what I mean? But there's taking the fucking piss as well. I was like, no way am I going there anyway. <laughs> yeah, so so like, I, I, geez, it's 250 a week. This time I was thinking of a millionaire. I, I was, uh, I, uh, I went up to, um, and then I messaged AK. They were very polite, very straightforward. Uh, I loved the idea of the wrestling that was there with DC. I loved the fact that Javier Mendez was a world champion kickboxer previously. That's what I was all about. So I was like, I love kickboxing. That's where I come from. Uh, and obviously, I want to improve my wrestling. How can you get better than DC, you know? Yeah. Was, was Khabib been around the gym as well at that time that you were there? Oh, Jesse he was. Yeah, yeah. He was prepping for Connor sure, at that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As, uh, as I suppose, kind of started a bit of beef, I suppose, with the, with the guys. Or... Ah, I did, yeah. A bit of healthy beef, sure. Look, what can you do? Yeah, it was uh, it was uh, Luke Rockhold would have been there as well at that time, would he? There's like stack Luke really was there. Gym. It stacked, stacked, stacked gym, yeah, stacked gym. A lot of great characters, a lot of good friends there. I love the love the team over there now. Fantastic, fantastic group of guys. Yeah, well, even as you said to improve the wrestling, the, the, what I hear is they even have a lot of like Olympic level wrestlers that just come in and out of the gym for for some wrestling. So. They do, of course. They have a load of it. They have, and they, and it's big circulation. Like I got to, I got to spar with Cedric Dumbay on the last couple of days there. You know what I mean? And that was a, like there's so many guys coming in over there. Like to train with Cedric Dumbay is a huge thing for me because you know you're still if you're into the kickboxing scene. Like he's a huge name on the scene there. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, even even just a there's a there's a core group of guys, but there's a lot of guys that come in and come out all the time. So guys like that. So you're getting a lot of different fields as well as you're there. 
Uh, was did you enjoy the lifestyle over there? The, the Cal- in California, like you said, the night, the warm weather, warm weather, and training. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love the lifestyle over there. It gets a little bit. Uh, what can I say? It's a little bit superficial sometimes. The whole lifestyle over there. It's very big and broad and big supermarkets, big bars, like everything's big and better and and shiny and and then you but in the but if you look deep rooted in it, there's a lot of poverty and stuff like that. And there's something humbling about living out the country a little bit or living in living in Ireland. You know what I mean? Where that's kind of it's not really the way it is there here. You know. I, so I do love it out there, don't get me wrong, like every, each different country has their pros and cons, but uh, for me, a little bit, yet yeah, I can deal with a few months, but uh, I'd miss home, you know. Yeah, to, to, back to the Irish soil to humble you down a little bit, keep you on the ground. That's it. <laughs> the Irish won't be long telling you what's up. Yeah, the, I, I, but I even find out there is nothing about, like when you step off the plane at home and you get the first hit, hit of that fresh air, does it, uh-huh. it's different to any place else yeah it is yeah it is it's beautiful i love it like even even when you come back from england i find sometimes it's, it's nearly there's just you just hit with a different uh, a different feel when you step off the plane yeah different different it's just fresher isn't it fresher air or something yeah like yeah so um did, well, when did you did, had you signed for bellator already when you joined with, with aka or was that kind of was that after yeah, I signed with I signed I signed with Bellator before I went over to AK. Yeah, so I was uh, I was like, right, that's another reason why I'd like to go across here and really like step up my game a bit, you know. Yeah, how many fights did you sign up for with Bellator at the time? I I, I signed I signed for a four 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 fight contract for eighteen months. So, uh, haven't done many of them. <laughs> I've only done the one. Yeah, yeah. Was it was there injuries? I know there was. Um... There was a cancellation in there as well, was there? Or was it mostly injuries that was kept you out? A uh, couple, cu- no, no, no. A uh, couple of uh, dis- disagree- disagreements. First off, with the with the matchups, uh, I was told to, um, you know, like for me, it was a big. It was there was a lot of marketing involved for me. I gave Bellator kind of like what any promotion would want: a lot of beef, a lot of traction with the with the fight with me and Peter. Um, uh, kind of unintentionally, uh, to be honest with you, because I was only speaking the, the truth, like you know what I mean. And it was just a coincidence that I was over there, so I was like, oh, fuck. well, if we can get a bit of American out of it, this, that's great, and I'm sure that makes Bellator happy. So, um, yeah, uh, I felt like I, I I gave them a lot in regards to that. Peter didn't have to do anything really, only just to just kind of be Connor's training partner. You know what I mean? So, uh, I felt like that. Um, after winning the co-main event and not getting an interview after and all that, I was like, okay, uh, I, I like I was I was full sure I had my hopes so and I made the assumption so it was my fault to make the assumption that politics weren't going to come into involved with it, but uh, that I was going to get a good fight and be on the main carriage. You know what I mean? But you know, Jude, you know, rang me and like Jude's the Jude's a good guy. I do like Jude, but he's working for Bellator now and they obviously are very well tied in with SVG and John Cavanaugh because. Even though I felt like I gave them a lot of value in that fight, they were the you know they wanted to put me down on the down on the prelims with my teammate Redzer, uh, give us give me a guy who was coming off a five six year layoff who was from SBG who was also a very good fighter I knew him I trained with him for a while, and I was like hold on here you know what I mean how can I win a co-main event at Bellator, and get disrespected by not getting an interview after the fight, and then. On the next card, you're giving me a lose lose situation. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, so no, I'm not doing it. And then I got desperate and I called out Kiefer online and he agreed. And then I was like, oh, why did I do that? Because, like, at the end of the day, Kiefer isn't on my level. You know what I mean? Like, he hasn't even fought on lightweight. Like, he, he lost his last fight, in my opinion, you know. And it's a win win for him to fight me. Like, I'm a much bigger name than he is, like, in regards to fighting status, you know. Like and coming off a big win against his teammate Peter, like you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to give him that, like, because it's not about money and it's not about fame on Instagram and fucking social likes for me. It's about because I love to do it. I come from humble backgrounds, you know what I mean. So, like, uh, I do it for different reasons. So I'd rather not fight if you if if I feel if it doesn't sit well with me, like you know what I mean. Especially when, you know, if I was coming off a loss, I'd fight. I definitely fight, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that based on my principles. And 
the fact of the matter is, is that it didn't sit very well with me either that Peter was fighting like on the main card against the top ranked opponent in Ryan Scope. And I was being thrown down the prelims. It, it's not only disrespectful to me, it's not only disrespectful to the fact that I gave to a promotion a lot with that fight. Uh, and it's and it's disrespectful also to my to my team. You know what I mean? It really is, and to mixed martial artists in general. So I'm not going to stand for that, like it's that simple, you know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, I still have a good relationship with Bellator. Great, great promotion. I uh, haven't really spoke to him, to be honest with you. But, like, I'm going to stand my ground on those types of things. And, uh, like, I fight Kiefer now is the thing. Because I haven't fought in a fucking year, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, he did offer me a great fight, though, Jude. I will say that. He gave me a fantastic fight against Alfie Davies. That was a great fight. I was really looking forward to that. But unfortunately, my mom fell very, very ill and she had to move back in with me into my house. So I had to kind of care for her for a while and just look after her with her mental and her physical health. So I had to prioritize things there. Yeah, hopefully everything's all, is, is some bit better there now. Um, yeah, it is, Jamie. Thanks. Right. Uh, yeah, I thought it was strange, all right, with the, with that, uh, with the Bell Talk card. Like that, just seeing Peter had lost like to yourself and then was like, fighting a a highly ranked guy like Ryan so high up the card you would have thought maybe he would have dropped back but uh, yeah I thought it was a bit a bit, uh, a bit strange alright I think a lot well, of people that's, that's, yeah straight up politics that's all that is and I think everybody knows that too it's not it's not uh, you know it's it's obvious like, like what, what's going on like, in there you know what I mean yeah did you expect the beef like to he, kick off the way it did uh, when you, did you expect it all to kick off kind of the, the, the beef I suppose uh, the way it did after you went went and trained in AKA and that kind of stuff, and that you were been asked. Yeah, well, well, I, I wasn't I, I wasn't focusing on it at the time, but when uh, my good friend Pedersi kind of uh, we were talking about it, you know what I mean, and I was like, geez, you know what? There's a great, in, there is actually a bit of a great marketing and interview here, like you know what I mean. So mm-hmm. I love, yeah, sure. Look, I'll just speak my mind on it, and we'll see what happens, like and. Like, I knew that SPG lads, certain guys within the, do you know, the the S, the, the Connor, the guys who were close to Connor, the, the, the kind of, the clannish kind of guys, they're very much so uh, sensitive to anybody saying anything about Connor, you know what I mean, or, or anything like that. So I knew they get upset, you know, I hurt their egos a little bit by, by saying, by telling the truth. Um, and I knew John wouldn't say anything. John's John's very cute, like you know what I mean. His butter wouldn't melt on on online and social media, so he wouldn't gonna say anything. But I knew I hurt the lads already, right? and I knew the keyboard warriors would be here too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like you said, though, it's what it's what it needed. It definitely, uh, like it, it made for a, a good watch. It, um, mm, it got, right, it, yeah, it was good. It got some good traction, and it had me excited. It had me excited for the fight. Um, it was good. The, like the, and there was a savage atmosphere that night in the tree arena as well. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's unbelievable. It was unbelievable. It was the best night ever to come out of Ireland, I have to say. That and the UFC fight night, yeah. Yeah, the, I know, obviously, you were, I think you would have been already, were you already in the cage when Peter, like, because Peter obviously had a great, yeah, a savage walkout. Were you already in the cage at that point? I can't fully remember. I was, yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah, How did, did, did you kind of soak that in or were you kind of more focused on um, I know it was for the other guy, like, but uh, did you take any notice of the crowd and the atmosphere? Did you kind of were you more focused? Uh, on- I, um, uh, years ago, that would have affected me, and I would have been focusing on the crowd and the magnitude of the event. But I'm all tunnel ton- vision now. When I get into the cage, you know, I'm only focused on what I'm going to do, and that's it. You know. Yeah, because it was there some good satisfaction after getting the win. Because I think, like, after the initial kind of interview, you did I think it was mostly Peter was doing most of the talking, and. Um, and and you were kind of more, maybe seemed more focused on the fight, and so there was a bit of satisfaction then when you got to win that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Peter was doing a lot of talking, but but Peter, Peter is like you know, I I knew I beat Peter, like you know what I mean. There's, uh, there's, I just I'm a terrible matchup for him, and I knew he was going to get emotionally invested into the into the night as well, like you know what I mean, because. Ah, he just was. I understand the type of fighter he is. Like anyone that's in that little circle is emotionally a little bit on edge you know what i mean so you can't bring emotions into a into a fight and they'll they'll last for a while they'll look after you for a while and they'll they'll get you to where you need to for a certain amount of time but 
in the long run, they'll catch up and they'll bite you in the hole. Like they, caught, they bit him in the hole that night. And they'll bite Kiefer in the hole too. And they'll bite James, James Gallagher in the arse as well. Yeah. Do you, do you think the kind of politics has kind of come into the type of fights you're kind of seeing on, um, on the Bellator cards? I think, like, like that, I'd like to, for me, as a, as a fan, I'd like to see these guys like James Gallagher and that stepping up maybe against some higher opposition. Do you think it's kind of politics that it comes to Ireland and maybe of course. aren't at the level? Of course, of course. Like it's everybody knows, right? If if you don't understand, if you can't see that they're getting handpicked fights, then you're not a real mixed martial arts uh, fan. You don't know the the ins and outs of martial arts. If you can't see that they're getting handpicked because the second they fight anyone half decent, they look average or they just lose. You know, simple. Like that's it. Like. Peter was even very lucky to beat. It was a fantastic comeback now. It was a great fight. Fair play to him. He showed serious fucking heart. And it was a great, great stoppage. But he was lucky to get it. Yeah. Yeah, it was a... That, that, that choke was in tight there for a while. <laughs> yes, he was getting... He was getting bet up bad, but... And do you think it's any then surprise, like you said, it, John is obviously maybe close to the guys uh, who are doing the matchmaking in Bellator. Do you think it then maybe it's, any, it's not Forks. a surprise that there hasn't been... There hasn't been many guys from that gym to make a push for the UFC. More so um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think they need to. I think they're getting paid. I think they're getting paid better than what they would in the UFC. But do you think that's the? Do you think that's the only reason? Like, I think maybe at this, a couple of years ago there was the maybe the push of the and the the allure of having a UFC champion in the gym and guys, UFC champions in the gym. Do you think that's maybe that's gone and they're, they're happy to? Push and go it's for gone that. now that yeah that's gone people don't care about that anymore you know what I mean people care at the end of the day if I had to choose between Bellator and the UFC I probably pick Bellator you know if I had to pick, like at the end of the day like at the end of the day you fight for the love of it according like if the UFC came if the UFC did come to me and they said look you want to fight of course I'd fight for them just to say that I fought in the UFC that's great but if you were looking at it from a, a money point of view Bellator much better. Yeah, would you say? But even would you say that even for maybe younger guys coming through, like would say if you're just starting off, would you say take but take the the Bellator money even early, or maybe take on maybe I don't know a promotion like Cage Warriors or like maybe uh, maybe something like Bam at the time, take maybe a little bit less money to in the end push for the UFC. Oh, of course, you have to do it for the love of you have to do it for the love of the sport. For me, I was always content for whoever came knocking first between Bellator and UFC. I was I see them very much so on the same, you know, the same wavelength, like you know what I mean? So for me anyway, I feel like I was happy with Bellator, you know what I mean? I was like, look, I'm delighted to fight on a promotion at this level. And um yeah, I was very content with that, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Give in. You've also been a bit bit like you said, like with Alfie Davis, there's been a little bit of uh... You've been unlucky with kind of pullouts because um, am I right that you had like a fight scheduled with like to, like sort of Reese McKee and a couple of other guys at that level? I did. I had a. I, I had. I had a very. Uh, I had a very. I had a very unfortunate rib injury coming up to that. Like you know, I was sparring up in my good friends Jim, Mark Casserly's, and they had some guys from Lionheart down there uh, at the time. Uh, sparring and you know you when like they were fighting on cage kings in like two weeks time and this lad who was like you know uh, sorry there one sec sorry uh mm -hmm. there's this guy that was uh there was this guy that was um what was i saying oh yeah he was uh he was like fighting in two weeks he had a very good toy boxing record fucking way heavier than me. I was well out of shape. Like, I was a tubby, tubby at the time, you know what I mean? I was well out of shape. And he absolutely went to town on me in the barn, you know what I mean? And he fucked up my ribs, like, you know what I mean? Trying to, it's just, his ego was getting in the way, like, and he fucked me up. No knee pads, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you need anyone without any knee pads, it's an AKA, you get, you get absolutely out of it, like, you know what I mean? So, I was a little bit annoyed about that, but I had to let it go. It was the nature of the game, and I missed the opportunity of that fight. Like, I was, I actually have way less injuries now than what I did a couple of years ago. I'm a lot better at maintaining it. Like, the responsibility is on me, too. I shouldn't have gone into a fire fight with him. 
and uh, I'm a lot better at maintaining my injuries now as well so I don't get injured at all really anymore yeah I like that even like uh, Reese McKee and I think as well like you had like that fight was a fight with Pedro Carvalho fight fell through as well uh, he, fell, he he pulled out that like Reese now I would have loved to have fought Reese that night I'd still love to fight Reese Reese is a great fighter but I think I had his number that night but I wouldn't have liked to in a way I wouldn't have liked to fought Keith that night Keith or, or Reese that night because he was sick and you could see that he wasn't 100% himself he looked fucked in that fight fucked and I wouldn't have fought the best Reese McKee that night. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what's like and that. the Pedro, and I'm oh, sorry, the Pedro fight, he pulled out. Pedro pulled out because he got signed to Bellator. That's why I fought Phil Rayburn instead. All right. I like that. There was kind of like, maybe kind of, there was three fights in a row that kind of, you look back there, where maybe would have been big, big fights in, uh, especially amongst the Irish kind of, the Irish may scene. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um so like like you said, is the the plan is maybe to stick with to stick with Bellator for a past maybe your contract? I d I don't I don't know. I don't know why. Look, I I'll be honest with you, I feel like the only way Bellator are probably going to give me a fight now, like a decent fight, is if I fight somebody from SBG and there's a bit of beef behind it. Yeah. So and that's the only that's it. And that's and that's just straight up, that's the way it's gonna be like but it does come down to my manager as well, what he thinks is best for me and my coach Andy. So, I suppose you feel you're kind of in the situation of it's it's going to have to maybe be not an ideal fight in the next one just to get back in there. I I'd, I'd fight I'd fight Keith for him in the next fight. I would like I fight him like and I and I feel like it would be a great fight too. I I don't think I don't think he's going to. I think he's going to be tough for the first round. I think Keith is very dangerous and I think he's a good fighter. And uh, like anything can happen in the cage, but like from my point of view, like I feel like he's probably going to get emotionally invested. He's probably going to feel the weight cut because I'm a big lightweight, like you know what I mean. And in regards to wrestling and grappling, like I mean, he's in trouble there. Like I know that for sure. I mean, <laughs> he's not he's not gone to the places I have in regards to grappling and wrestling and stuff like that. Like you know. Like he would want to knock me clean out to fucking to, to win that fight. Like I know that. Yeah, I suppose that the, when you when maybe when you've had DC sitting on you, it's not the same. It's a, it, when you have somebody the same size as you, it's a it's a different ball game. I I have <laughs> I have been in some horrible situations <laughs> with AK. So you ain't yeah. you ain't throwing in at me that I haven't seen before. I know that. So like, but outside of. COVID nineteen. What does a what does a training schedule look like look like for you in terms of strength and condition sessions to MMA sessions and that? Uh, well, I'm not doing every, any MMA sessions really. I, I do a little bit of uh, maybe wrestling, stance and motion. Might we do some bag work. Uh, but a lot of it, a lot of what I do with you, I auto regulate quite a lot. Like you know what I mean? I think relationship. I think scheduling is something you should only do in a camp. Like you know what I mean? Like I think the scheduling can be very stressful, and I feel like that it's um it's it's not really good for building a healthy relationship with training. You know what I mean? So when I get up in the day, I go by how I feel, what mood I'm in, and what my body is feeling like. You know, but generally my day would revolve around a run and some strength conditioning. Like, but the strength and conditioning isn't like you know it's obviously sports performance based. You know, I do a lot of like. Uh, heavy stuff, the plyometric stuff, uh, tie it in with unconventional training like kettlebells and some conditioning and isometric stuff, you know what I mean? And I do between three three to five K most days, you know what I mean? So that's that's a great, uh, like I love running, like running is great mentally for me, like, you know what I mean? I feel like it builds up a lot of mental resilience. I, don't, I feel like if you're not running, there's a big difference between me when I run for a fight and when I don't, you know? Yeah. Have you somebody who looks after your strength and conditioning or is it all you kind of, like you said, you take care of it yourself? And I uh, know I have a, I have a strength and conditioning coach, uh, Killian, uh, KD Sports and Performance, uh, uh, KD Athletic Performance, Killian Doyle. He's a very good strength and conditioning coach. So he looks after me the same way I look after my clients. I'm a personal trainer as well. And obviously I'm a coach. So uh, I feel like that um, it's not really that I can't do it. Obviously I have the information to, to do it, but I like giving that energy to, for somebody else to, to when I'm in a camp because I have enough to think about, you know what I mean? So when they kind of take the load of the responsibility of what structure I should have for a camp, 
then I all I got to do is turn up and do what they tell me, you know, which is a, which is t- takes away a lot of stress. Like, yeah, even when you're I suppose when you're programming, for, if you program for yourself and stuff, you can nearly be second guessing. Whereas if it's somebody else has told you this is what you're to do, it can be much easier to go right, Grant. That's exactly. What I do. Yeah, builds a lot of confidence. And do you have somebody then who maybe looks after your nutrition? As you, you mentioned already, you're, you're a big lightweight. He looks after my nutrition as well. He's also my nutritionist. All right, so that's. So that he's, he's, yeah, he, yeah, he's, he, he works. He's a George Lockhart nutritionist. He works under those guys. So. Okay, yeah, so I, that's coming from a, a good accreditation there. So. Hundred percent, yeah. There's quite a few guys in Ireland with that kind. There kind of seem to be going that route, don't they? With the the George Lockhart, whatever. I'm not sure. Oh well, uh, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, the uh, sure Connor Connor had him as a nutritionist, didn't they? So. They kind of everybody kind of went down that route then. So so did my strength and conditioning coach, which is great. You know what I mean? He's a, he is a, he is a decorated uh, nutritionist for sports performance. So why wouldn't you go to him? You know. Yeah. So then, in terms of like your coaching, uh, have, have you all, have you been coaching for long, or is that something you've only oh, the last couple of years? Or no, no, no. I've been coaching since I started martial arts. Like you know, what I mean, pretty much like you know, because look. It's just one of those things that I kind of had to help people along the way with what I was doing, you know what I mean? Because everybody, everybody, well, nobody really knew what they were doing from the very start. So, like, everybody helped each other out. So, in a way, by helping each other out, we were coaching each other along the way. And sure, then it just, nobody else teaches martial arts where I'm from, you know what I mean? Not to the level I'm at anyway, you know what I mean? Or to, do you know what I mean? To Or have the contacts that I have, like, you know what I mean? So... Like it, of course, I have to be here for any local young lads that want to do martial arts. Like you know what I mean? And, uh, that's what the game is all about for me. You know what I mean? And yeah, I love competing, but I don't do it for selfish reasons. I do it to inspire other people and to care for other people too. So, the, have you found a different a different buzz from from coaching fighters to stepping in yourself and getting a win yourself? <sighs> uh I enjoy I enjoy getting the win. I'm not going to lie. I do enjoy getting the win, but I think I get a better buzz from my my, my students doing well. To be honest with you, you know, and that's just my characteristics as well. You know what I mean? Like I don't. It's very short lived a win for me. You know what I mean? Like uh, obviously on the night and you're fucking on partying in the weekend, it's great. You know what I mean? But after that, you're like, ah, oh, you know what? It's a lot more fulfilling to give to others and to support them along their way all the time. So. Yeah, and it's as a it, I coach taekwondo myself, and it's it's harder when you, when you can't. It's not like it's not like playing the PlayStation where you can press the button and they'll throw the technique that you that you want them to throw. It's you know you have to put in the preparation and build, like you said, build the skills into them, and then give them the knowledge to be able to to pull out their the right shots at the right time. And you kind of have to take exactly. the back seat, you have to take the back seat then, and so that adds a different, I think, a different fulfillment yeah. then. You do, yeah, yeah. You're happy for others. You're just happy for other people. Like, you know what I mean? They're a product of your coaching, like, you know what I mean? And they're, and whether they win or lose has ultimately an effect on you too, you know? Yeah. So, and is, is the gym that you're, is that, a, is that an MMA gym or is it mostly kickboxing or are you? Uh, oh, no, it's, it's uh, mainly MMA and BJJ. I, I come from a kickboxing background and I have, uh, I have good kickboxing prospects like, uh, like most young lads to come to me would be striking based, trying to get people uh, to do the wrestling and BJJ. Like uh, it's a harder route when you come into it from striking. You know what I mean? It's uh, yeah, like I'd much rather if it's, see this isn't going to be the way for a long time unless you're from America or Russia. But like, like I'd rather young lads come from a BJJ or I'd rather them come from a wrestling base. If I was being completely honest with you, if they came from a wrestling base they'd be fucking sorted for MMA, you know. Yeah. But it is more difficult to teach, uh, you know what I mean, strikers to be grapplers, you know. It's hard. Yeah, it seems to, like, you know, like, just, like UFC, and uh, you look across, across the, a lot of the champions, it's wrestling, wrestlers who have a bit of boxing, and it, you can get they quite do. far. Yeah, well, sure, look, a pure example of that was Conor versus Habib, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. Connor's an amazing striker, and I still think he's the only one that can be Habib. But uh, I just think that I just think that the wrestling's going to get get him no matter what, you know. Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't fancy Tony's chances against Khabib? No, 
No, I think it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be the toughest fight Habib ever had, but uh, the fundamental base of Habib is is always going to outlive and outlast an unorthodox uh, kind of, in a sense, made up style from Tony. Like you know what I mean? Someone that's like his style. Like the reason why he wins fights is because he's tough and he's unorthodox. But the fact of the matter is, is that you know there's no real structure to that. Like you can't beat fundamentals. Like, you know what I mean? It's that simple, you know what I mean? Like, no matter how fancy you are, if you don't have, like, solid fundamentals, you're fucked. And I feel like that Habib's fundamentals compared to Tony's unorthodox style, Habib's going to win every day. Yeah, I suppose you've had a chance to experience those fundamentals then as well, so... <laughs> yeah. 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 And then, so then who, do you, who do, you, do you think for the weekend with uh, Tony and uh, Justin Gaethje then? Is that this weekend, is it? Yeah, Saturday, yeah. Fuck off, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's just Jesus Christ, man. I I don't be uh, I I I am really I don't I don't really follow martial arts you see, like I was being honest with you, you know what I mean? I'm terrible with keeping in the loop with all that type of stuff, like so. Uh fucking hell, that's interesting. Uh oh, ah, if I had to say, I'd say fucking Tony, to be honest. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, I was meant to train. I was meant. I was meant to train with fucking Justin Gaethje as well. To be honest with you, uh, my manager rang me while I was over in AK. He invited me to go over and train with because uh, I was training with him. Um, I was training with uh, a couple of like Aaron P- Pico. You know what I mean? There for when we were in AK, and my manager manages him too. And he and he went over to Las Vegas. He said, "Oh, do you want to come to?" Train with Justin Gaethje and uh, Justin Gaethje and Frankie Edgar. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, I wish I'm going home tomorrow, you fucker. He was going to pay for me flights and the whole lot. I was like, oh my God, if I had the money, I'd fucking rebook me flights and go back another week. But it was literally, I was going home the next day. Like, you know what I mean? So I would have loved to train with Gaethje. That would have been with uh, Mark Henry, was it? Frank Edgar? Mark Henry? Uh, no, no, it was just, it was just, uh, my manager had all his fighters going to, going to, uh, just train in Vegas is kind of oh. like just to get together, like, you know what I mean? All right, okay. Yeah. So you, you, you've had quite some, you've had some experiences training um, around some different places and training with some different I have, people. Yeah. I have, yeah. I have. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that's, uh, do you think that's benefited as opposed to maybe somebody who just has been with the same gym all the time? Do you think it's helped you that you've got some different experiences, input from different coaches, different fighters? Uh, I think I think that it gives you a lot of perspective, and I love uh, meeting new people and and uh, expressing my martial arts with different people. You know what I mean? I think that's a, that has a lot to say for for uh, growing as a person and as a martial artist. You know, I don't really like. I, I think there's insecurity. Like you have to have confidence in your team, but there's also insecurities based around training with the same team all the time. You know, you have to you have to either get people in that are different spars or you have to go out and find different spars, you know what I mean? And then you have to almost bring it back to where you're loyal to, you know. I, I, that's my firm belief. I've always been a bit like that. Some people agree to it, some people don't, but that's my belief, you know. Yeah, I would, uh, I would agree that. You have to, like you said, you have the, the, the core group, the people that maybe you'll do most of the serious training with when you're maybe in a camp or you're preparing for uh, an event. But outside of that, then it's no harm to go and get some influences from from other people no. and, and different places. And it builds big, it builds big, builds big confidence as well. You know what I mean? Like I mean, like I train in AK and then I come back to Team Rhino and I'm still getting me blade in our like, <laughs> Do you know? It just <laughs> yeah. it just comes to show that like you know you have like look that's where we're fucking at, like you know. Yeah, I suppose then it shows us like like you said that uh, that maybe the gym you're in that like the grass isn't always greener that you know that there's some of the training you're you're getting here at home can be just as good as uh, the training you're getting abroad just maybe exactly. it, just maybe it's a di- it's a different vibe but it's not any it's not any less quality 100% yeah and um have you found since since switching like you said mostly your BJJ have did you has your love maybe changed from from stand up to more grappling based did you, did you yeah yeah i still love striking i still love striking you know but if I had to pick my, oh, jeez, man, I don't know what my favorite is. If I had to say what my favorite, I would probably be jujitsu. Probably be jujitsu. Was being honest with you, 
Like I love jujitsu, because like, I feel like it's so broad as well. You know, like it, like, like anyone can do jujitsu and it can change their life. And I feel like that it's so complex that you have to be so knowledgeable in regards to problem solving, and you can really mold yourself into a certain jiu-jitsu fighter you know what I mean same as you would for an MMA fighter you know what I mean stand up or wrestling but for me I love jiu-jitsu you know would you train mostly in the gi or, or without the gi uh, I, I went through a phase years ago where I was just like all gi now I'm like oh man I don't uh, I love training in the gi love it but I'm a no gi guy at heart really like yeah and are you, are you, are you hoping to go through as like going through the belts is something that's a, a goal of yours or are you just focused on as long as you do like more so MMA based or ah uh, no I I, I, uh, I, I I don't really care about belt grades like I'm a brown belt now you know what I mean but uh, like I've been training in jiu-jitsu since I was fucking 60 like I've, I've I've rolled against black belts all the time like you know what I mean I don't compare myself from brown belt to black belt I just see a person and I'm going to attack that person <laughs> and I'm going <laughs> to figure them out I'm gonna figure them out, like you know what I mean. If I if I look at that per like when I was like a white belt and blue belt, I tapped out a black belt a few couple of times, a couple of times. You know what I mean? It's like like I know like it's, it doesn't come down to as GSP would say, there's black belts and then there's black belts. You know what I mean? There's you can't look at a belt and and connect the person with that belt. You know what I mean? You have to just see them as a different problem to solve, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's a very good approach to have. Um, I think, especially like other martial arts, that even with other things, people see that that, that person's a black belt, but then they're suddenly an expert on on everything. It's like even outside of sometimes even can be even outside of martial arts, they're suddenly an expert. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 ridiculous. Like you know, like people, there's no permanent state that somebody is in. Like you know what I mean? I mean, like there's stages where I I could be performing like a black belt world champion, and then there's there's some days where I could be a fucking white belt in the gym, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you think though, at maybe at some stage it would be nice to have as a coach to maybe just to, you know be maybe be have the black belt in jujitsu? Um, yeah, would be. Yeah, would be nice. Yeah, maybe just not a maybe not at the forefront. Um, I, w- I was kind of planning to to ask you like some of the picks for the fights, but uh, you said you don't follow, so I don't know. Like, uh, w- would you still have it? Go opinion? on, I'll, I'll, I would. Yeah, go on. Go on. Uh, if so, for Cejudo and Cruz, who would you pick? Cejudo and Cruz. Oh, fuck me. Jeez, that's a good fight, isn't it? Uh, Cruz. Cruz. Uh, he always seems to come out and fucking pulls out a fucker out of the bag every now and again, doesn't he? Yeah. And I think Henry. Henry's a little bit... I don't know if, if he's putting it on, but he could be... Getting a bit big for his boots. I don't think, I think he can definitely beat Cruz, but I think that this whole triple G thing and or triple fucking gold shit, like, I feel mm-hmm. like, I don't know if it's gone to his head or it's something that he's put on. You know, I don't know. But it, that could have an effect on the fight. But I'll just say Cruz for a crack. Yeah, I hope Cruz wins, but I think Sahud will win. So <laughs> hopefully okay. it's Cruz. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Cowboy and Pettis. Oh, are they fighting, are they? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think, I think, uh, oh man, do you know, I think Cowboy, I think he does well in rematches. Yeah. Um, but d- it depends, you see, the two of them, the two of them tend to mentally break and fight sometimes, you know what I mean? So it uh, it depends. Who yeah. who starts the fastest, really? Look. If Pettis starts fast, Cerrone's fucked. Yeah, it's a, they're both up and down guys, aren't they? I say I'll put my money on Cerrone. On Cerrone, and then um, maybe just before we finish, if you if you had to pick a favorite fighter, a favorite fighter to watch, who would you pick? Oh Jesus! Fuck. GSP. Yeah. Would you consider him the greatest of all time? Yeah. I think that I think that um, he's just so tactically beautiful to watch. You know what I mean? And he is the he, for me. I I don't really like like putting people on pedestals. Uh, I like kind of just seeing them for what they are uh, and not kind of 
like being honest, having an honest approach towards people as opposed to seeing their credentials and that. But I can't help but be impressed not only at his credentials, how it, but how he also approaches fight, a fight and how he's made himself uh, uh, a legend in the sport by being one of the most humblest people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if, from what I can tell, he's extremely humble. He's a great guy. And he's just, uh, he's like, he's like Wonder, Stephen Thompson, Wonder Boy Thompson. He's just, he teaches kids on a regular basis. He's a pure martial artist. He's all like uh, being nice to his opponents, just being a super nice guy. Like that, to me, is what martial arts is all about. You know what I mean? Like this whole shit of going around abusing people, like I just don't like, I just don't understand it. Like, you know, I don't understand because you have no idea how many people you're influencing by being like that. Like, you know what I mean? It's it's inter it's entertaining in a Kardashian way, but like I don't. <laughs> I, I don't I don't agree with it at all. Like, you know what I mean? And that's why that's one of the main reasons why I really like I really like GSP. Yeah, no, he li he lives the life. And do you yeah. think do you think some of that kind of maybe beef that kind of like that the, the over and back the, the shit talking is is maybe what gives can give the sport a bad name? And yeah, hundred percent. You end up I, seeing. I don't even. Like Joe Brown I don't even care. Go Sorry, go on. No, no, no. <laughs> you go on. You're talking. You just see guys like uh, you see guys like Joe Brawley and that like writes articles in his column and stuff about how it's human cockfighting and all this sort of stuff and it kind of it nearly only gives it a very a very narrow picture. It paints a very narrow picture of really what the sport is and that really the sport is mostly filled with you know like that people highly respectable people and respectful people. I think that it's a lot. Look at the end of the day, you're always going to get egotistical guys that love smack to talk in every fucking sport every sport and unfortunately we're in a sport where if you have guys like that which is obviously natural we're in a game of fighting here that it's going to particularly shine a bad light on us because it's fighting you know what i mean so you you come across like if you don't if if we don't all stick together in being pure martial artists and taking the longer route and taking taking you know the harder fights and building yourself up the ranks but being nice along the way then i i feel like that it's it would ruin the sport like very very quickly to to be the let's fast track this and let's get people emotionally invested by being arseholes you know what i mean and saying whatever the fuck you need to say to 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 get the money and get the fights and get the likes, I think like that's going to shine such a bad light in the sport. I think it's completely unnecessary. But I also agree with the fact that it's part of the sport also now, and it's not going to change. But it doesn't mean that I have to be happy about it. And uh, if I had to, if I had to say if there is a right way to build a fight, uh, I'm not being biased here because it was me. But I'd say uh, it's probably the way I did it. <laughs> because I, I was just honest about my situation. I was honest about what was going on. Uh, and that, in turn, upset a couple of people. And it so happened to upset people that are, like, well-marketed guys, you know what I mean? Because they're tied in with Connor. So, like, that was a win-win for me. I didn't, give, I didn't break any principles of mine. I didn't give away any of myself. But I also got a big marketing fight. Like, great. Yeah, like that, like you said, yeah. It's I think it's better for the for the sport and there, and all martial arts if like that if it, it, there is that respectful element to it and it doesn't need to be the shit talk because because no. you don't see like that you don't see I actually you don't see it in the, the maybe like the, the ones that aren't mainstream like the it's kind of because it's the business side and it's a it, the money side that's where you see it like outside of that just if you just go a little bit deeper than that or behind that you don't see that in 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 sports or in or in the sport or in other martial arts no you don't and i'll be honest with you every time you do that it, it takes away a little bit of who you are you know what i mean like i i like i've i've been guilty of that before where i might say something out of character like go oh fuck you and push him or you know what i mean and afterwards i'm like you know my man that's just drained me so much just after doing that like that's not me what am i doing that shit for you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. like it takes something out of you when you do that you know what I mean it does look like like that it's a sign of your character you know what I mean so like yeah like you might fast track to the bigger fights 
you might get the publicity, you might get the money, but at the end of the day, the two biggest questions in life you have to ask yourself is, do you want to be somebody or do you want to do something? If you want to be somebody, you're probably going to not make a lot of friends, but you're going to make a lot of money. If you want to do something, you're going to keep your principles, you're going to keep your friends, and you're going to stay who you are, true to yourself. I actually think that that might be a good place to to, to wrap it up. Actually, I uh, I totally agree. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I'd say uh, thanks a million for coming on. I uh, really enjoyed the chat. Really enjoyed it too, Jamie. Thanks. Yeah, like that, and uh, hopefully, like we'll get back to properly training. You'll get some fights in, and uh, that's it. No, back to normal soon. So thanks a million for coming 100%. on. Hundred percent, bro. Thanks for having me. All the best. All the best, dude.